Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier, and thank you again for stopping by. I am grateful. I very much enjoyed myself yesterday evening at uh, an event hosted by Dr. Christian Turner. Um, he was hosting the Lord Mayor, there are two, um, and uh, uh, Fiona Wolfe is uh, the Alderman Lord Mayor of the City of London and her entourage. I filmed some short interviews which we will publish today. Dr. Turner has said many things and I remember once asked, talking to him about something called bow wave and he said to me, everyone has to have a bow wave. That was in January this year. Um, Fiona, I did an interview with her but she spoke about growing the cake together with Kenya um, and uh, we did a, I did an interview which um, Rufus is sorting out right now um, and that will come on pretty soon. We got on rather well. I enjoyed her company. Thank you. And I also did a short interview with Matt, Matt Lilly, who is the CEO of Prudential Africa. Um, and he was at the same function. They've, of course, acquired Shield Assurance, which is a insurance company here. Um, they'd previously done an acquisition in Ghana. And uh, he sort of conjured up this image of thousands of salesmen crisscrossing Kenya. And you'll see that in the interview when we do upload it. My home thoughts return to Kanye West in one of my favorite songs called I Wonder. I wonder, and it says, I wonder if you know what it means, what it means, and I wonder if you know what it means, what it means to find your dreams. I've been waiting on this my whole life. These dreams be waking me up at night. You say I think I'm never wrong. You know what? Maybe you're right. And I wonder if you know what it means, what it means. And I wonder if you know what it means to find your dreams. And I'm still stuck on uh, Rainer Maria Rilke, who you will recall is tattooed on Lady Gaga's body. Um, and he's such a fabulous poet. And two more uh, little uh, quotes. You must give birth to your images. They are the future waiting to be born. <clears throat> Fear not the strangeness you feel. The future must enter you long before it happens. Just wait for the birth, for the hour of the new clarity. A billion stars go spinning through the night, glittering above your head. But in you is the presence that will be when all the stars are dead. And then I came across this in the New Yorker. The GoPro short video is a post-literate diary, a stop on the way to a future in which everything will be filmed from every point of view, which is a thought. President Obama has become the fourth president in a row to go on primetime TV and announce Iraq bombings. Put up an image that the Independent tweeted. And then Robert Fisk in The Independent is writing about the Islamic State and saying Assad lures Obama into his web. Syria has asked Washington to engage in military and intelligence collaboration to defeat their mutual enemy ISIS, inviting U.S. congressmen and senators to visit Damascus to discuss joint action against the jihadis who threaten both America and the regime of Bashar al-Assad. It's an offer that President Obama will have to refuse, but not without some embarrassment. After deciding to bomb the forces of ISIS, which calls itself Islamic State in Syria as well as Iraq, Mr. Obama was confronted by Vladimir Putin's warning that any such unilateral action in Syria would be an act of aggression. The US President will now have to explain yet again why he cannot collaborate against America's apocalyptic enemies with the Syrian regime which has also sworn to overthrow, even though this regime is fighting exactly the same enemies. Come into my parlour, says the spider to the fly, for the Syrian regime's web has proven far tougher than America and Europe imagined, and the principal fly has exhibited all the characteristics of weakness, fear and indecision, 
which the Syrian spider understands. Only just over a year ago, the US was planning to smash the Syrian regime with bombs and missiles. And now that it wants to smash the ISIS regime with bombs and missiles, Syria will exact a price for any assistance Washington seeks. Um, uh, and then, of course, jumping from that, I think that's a fair, a fair point, and I think this is the inherent contradiction in President Obama's uh, uh, policy in this area, in that um, those seeking to overthrow Assad, uh, or primarily jihadists uh, of the diehard ilk, and financed essentially by supporters of President Obama. That brings us enormous complexity to the situation. Borowitz, who writes in the New Yorker and is terribly funny, says, John Kerry claims the US has found a moderate Syrian rebel. Though Kerry did not elaborate on how the US did so, he said that locating the rebel was the culmination of a months-long effort. The Secretary of State said that the Syrian had been appropriately vetted and was deemed moderately rebellious. He definitely seems to be the sort of gentleman we can work with, Kerry said, adding that several millions of dollars would be spent arming and training the rebel in the days and weeks ahead. Kerry said the government's successful identification of a moderate rebel was a major victory that should silence critics of the US's strategy in Iraq and Syria. To all of the naysayers who've been arguing that there are no moderate Syrian rebels, I am here today to say that we have found one, Kerry said. And if we have found one, that means that there must be others out there. Barack Obama has called the Ebola outbreak potential global security threat if the outbreak is not stopped. Now we could be looking at hundreds of thousands of people infected with profound political and economic and security implications for all of us, he said. While the risk to the US is very low, <clears throat> the unchecked and rapid spread of the virus has the potential for profound economic, political, security consequences of the countries affected collapse, collapse into chaos. Major General Darrell Williams, commander of the US Army in Africa, arrived in the Liberian capital of Monrovia today, where the Pentagon's Africa Command is setting up the headquarters for the Ebola response. And uh, conspiracy theorists are going to see this as an excuse to insert Africa into Africa. Many of the troops will be sent to a staging base in Senegal, where there's no current outbreak. The reality is that this epidemic is going to get worse before it gets better, Obama said. Without intervention by Western nations, computer models predict that the outbreak could mushroom into hundreds of thousands of cases. This is Beth Bell, director for the National Center for Emerging and Zoonotic Infectious Diseases. Ebola is a fire straight from the pit of hell, Brantley said in his prepared testimony. We cannot fool ourselves into thinking that the vast most of the Atlantic Ocean, the vast moat of the Atlantic Ocean, will keep the flames away from our shores. Instead, we must mobilize the resources needed to keep entire nations from being reduced to ashes. Uh, then uh, we, I learned that uh, Earth just had its warmest August on record. I'll put up an image. And I like this photograph from Kashmir Focus, not on the radar. South Kashmir fends for itself. Currency markets, the euro is at 129.52, a little bit firmer. Dollar index, 84.11. We're in this congestion zone. Japanese yen, 107.20. Swiss e, 0.9330. Pound, 162.82. And I think on balance in a week's time, we're going to be considerably higher than here. Aussie, 0.9069. India rupee, 61.007. South Korean, 110.33.75. Real 233.66, Egyptian pound 7.1482, and the Rand 1091.71. I'll put up a one month chart of sterling. Obviously, it's come down dramatically on the uh, toing and fraying around the poles. But I'm increasingly of the view that whatever happens, the pound rallies. Dollar index 84.11, as I've said on the 25th of August, I think the dollar is going to soar. Um, given the new level of arrhythmia, friction, and a kind of unsettling ambiguity uh, in the world that we find ourselves in. And 
therefore I'm looking for an opportunity to get back in the dollar. Euro dollar 129.52 gold, 1237.06, 1240 was my target which we've breached and I'm just keeping an eye on it for now. I haven't got a clear direction. Crude oil, $93.68. Futures rallied 2.1% yesterday. I had been saying that it was really oversold. 88 to 88.50 is the key support area, but we bounced ahead of that. Um, and this was the highest close since September 3rd. I think we're trying to base out here. Petra sold 122.52 carat blue diamond for $27.6 million. Um, this was recovered from the Cullinan mine in June, um, and uh, it's an interesting trade. It's a beneficiation partnership between itself, 15% and its polishing partner, 85%, who wishes to remain undisclosed. Um, the polishing partner will immediately settle its 85% of the agreed value, uh, being $23.5 million, which Petrol will mention as revenue in its Q1 full year 2015 results. I couldn't resist this, flanked by a stage adorned with flowers and hibiscus print fabric. Frank Bainimarama smiled at protesters, interrupting his campaign speech to about 1,000 Fijian expatriates in New Zealand. Devils, he called the hecklers to cheers from the crowd. A bunch of losers. Asked if the ballot will bring an end to Fiji's destabilizing coup culture, Bainimarama Bani Marama, 60, told the audience in Auckland last month there'll be no coup as long as they vote for him, which is a good way of putting it. Um, from Wired, uh, that article I referred to yesterday about the, mathematic, the mathematics of Ebola, um, I, I found the epidemic curves of the Ebola epidemic, and you can see it's really off the charts. In a worst-case hypothetical scenario, should the outbreak continue with the recent trends, the case burden could gain an additional 77,181 to 277,124 cases by the end of 2014. On the 18th of August, I mentioned that viruses exhibit non-linear and exponential characteristics. Uh, Liu of Medicine Sans Frontier made a number of comments, one of which was with every passing week the epidemic grows exponentially um, and she made a lot of very hard hitting comments, she's saying the response to Ebola continues to fall dangerously behind um, we need you on the ground, the window of opportunity to contain this outbreak is closing Today in Monrovia, six people are bang sick. People are banging on the doors of MSF Ebola care centres because they do not want to infect their families, and they are desperate for a safe place in which to be isolated. Tragically, our teams must turn them away. Uh, she also said, "We are unable to predict how the epidemic will spread. We are dealing largely with the unknown." But we do know that the number of recorded Ebola cases represents only a fraction of the real number of people infected. We do know that transmission rates are at unprecedented levels. We do know that communities are being decimated. And with certainty, we know that the ground response remains totally and lethally inadequate. With every passing week, the epidemic grows exponentially. With every passing week, the response becomes all the more complicated. I took part in that uh, inside story a few weeks ago, but I think I touched on many of these points, particularly the exponential nature of a virus. And I actually was um, uh, saying that I thought the numbers could go much higher than WHO's initial prediction of 20,000. Um, Vanity Fair saying three and a half months into the outbreak, no one suspected Ebola. What gave the virus away was, of all things, hiccups. Until 2014, the deadliest Ebola outbreak on record had killed 280 people. As of this writing, 1,427 people have died from Ebola. Um, saying, out of nowhere, from a flat bottom, the curve had begun to rise, and to rise more steeply than ever. Um, interesting article by ISS Africa. There are genuine concerns that the Islamic State's thousands of African fighters with access to the group's considerable war chest will return home to inflame existing conflict. 
The emergence of the Islamic State as the most significant development in Islamist extremism since the 9-11 attacks. It now controls significant portions of Iraq and Syria and has divided the global jihadist movement into two, offering a credible and divisive alternative to Al-Qaeda. With its plethora of radical Islamist groups, Africa must consider the potential impact of this on the continent. There are genuine concerns that the Islamic State's thousands of African fighters, with access to the group's considerable war chest, will return home to inflame existing conflict. Reports indicate that this has already happened in Libya. Africa should be worried. Kenyan businesses with operations in South Sudan are facing a human resource crisis after Juba ordered foreign workers holding key positions in private businesses and NGOs to be replaced by locals within one month. Um, all non-governmental organizations, private companies in general, banks, insurance companies, telecommunication companies, petroleum companies, hotels and lodges working in South Sudan are directed to notify all the aliens working with them in all the positions to cease working as from October 15th forthwith. This is an order issued on September 12 by South Sudan's Labour Minister Ngor Kolongo. The FT is saying, and I agree with them, if implemented, the order would deliver a knockout blow to the country's oil-based economy. Um, uh, most, much of the country's banking and trans sectors run by Kenyan corporates, while the country's nascent private sector relies on foreign-owned operations staffed by Chinese, Kenyan and Ugandan workers, as well as some Westerners. They will have no beer, no telecommunications, no roads, and no trading if they do this. But they don't appear to have sent any communiques direct to foreign workers or our companies as a business owner who employs 100 foreigners and saw the directive in the national newspaper. Nothing is coordinated at the moment, he said. I think it's a diabolical decision. River Nile, Juba, taken many moons ago. South African all share down 0.39%, but up 10.6407% uh, so far this year. Dollar Rand, when I looked last, 1091, so a little bit improved right at the bottom of the trading range. It blipped through it, traded above 11 uh, recently. Egyptian pounds steady as you like, 714.84. Egyptian stock market turned 0.93% higher. That's up 40.578% this year. The Nigerian all shares at 14 week lows, that's down 1.675% year to date. The Ghana Stock Exchange is up 5.221% year to date, uh, 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 closed up 0.72% uh, yesterday, four week highs, sentiment improving post the Eurobond and post the IMF outreach. Starwood joins in Africa's hotel rush. Starwood Hotels chain says it will add 20 hotels in Africa over the next four years, with five of them in Nigeria. Company is seeking to establish mainly five star properties to its adding to its existing set of 37 hotels. We are extremely positive about Africa. Massive opportunities there. It's mostly management contracts, it's our preferred vehicle for growth, and uh, lots of optimism in that sector. Interesting piece on uh, FT Beyond Bricks. Africa is rising, but so is hunger on the continent. I'll put up that chart. Number of hungry people in Africa has increased from 217 million to 227 million, apparently. Now, they've taken down uh, the documentary, but somebody had posted this HBO documentary called Terror at the Mall, Westgate Mall Attack documentary, but it's now been taken down, I'm afraid. I uh, And before I realized that it that it wasn't an official um, post. Managed to watch it yesterday. And uh, that, what I still find a non secretary is this if you go to when you get the chance to see it, 55 minutes and 30 seconds, they will, it, you will be told that this was the last time that um, the attackers were seen on CCTV camera. Then you jump to 56 minutes and 10 seconds and you're told that uh, the bodies were in the ashes. How? without any evidence you can come to that conclusion is a mystery to me, particularly because they were in the exit room where the majority of the public escaped. So then he turns the camera around, that's the last time you see him. The, the, the assumption you're going to make is that they've got out. And I, that's the assumption I'm still making. I'll put up a photograph of Westgate on fire, that was 358 days ago, and that apparently was when the army uh, launched a grenade or something into it. 
I wrote a piece uh, around the same time when I was speculating about the White Widow, Samantha Luthwaite, and I was coming up with various reflections. Uh, recently, on the 8th of September, I wrote this piece, The Decapitation of Gadane, Africa Insurgencies in U.S. Africa Command. And uh, I said it's unclear whether picking off the head of the snake of the organization, this was after the decapitation of Godana, is a good thing, or will unleash a hydra and two heads will grow back in his place. Ahmed Godana was well known to Kenyans in an audio message released days after the Nairobi attack. Godana praised the Westgate terrorists who killed at least 67 people. I've been sent ahead of the hour with the sword so that Allah will be worshipped alone without partners, he said in an audio message posted on a website linked to Al-Shabaab. He also said, you cannot withstand a war of attrition inside your own country, so withdraw all your forces or be prepared for an abundance of blood that will be spilt in your country. My conclusion on that piece was that the insurgency tail risk and how it plays out will have important consequence for ourselves and the entire Africa Rising narrative. I'll put up a photograph of Westgate taken around Christmas 1,738 days ago. The all share has rallied nearly 120% uh, over three years and it's up over 30% since Westgate. And that is an important signal in the noise. Um, if you haven't had a chance to read my piece uh, about the self-listing and the coming of age of the Nairobi Securities Exchange, please do. Um, the Kenya shilling is at a 31-month low, last trading 89.09. The Nairobi All Share closed a fresh record high yesterday. It's up 18.0607% year-to-date. NSE 20 crossed 5,200 for the first time in more than six years. Safaricom shareholders have approved the Kenya 7 billion shilling buyout of U Mobile. Um, and uh, some interesting comments came out because they had their AGM yesterday. Um, uh, as I've said before, Safaricom is not afraid of competition. In the past, some operators have thought they might have silver bullet op solutions to solve the challenges in the industry. They tried number portability, the reduction of mobile termination rates. We warned the industry, but no one listened to our advice. All this have not worked. Uh, Mr. Collimore said that the firm is looking forward to boosting its revenue through the second generation M-Pesa platform that is being tested at its headquarters. Um, with the new platform that is now located here in Kenya, currently undergoing tests, we expect to increase the number of M-Pesa transactions to 600 per second from the current 320 per second. Safari comes up 18.433% in 2014, it's turned ex-dividend today. Prudential PLC has acquired Shield Assurance. This is uh, um, the, the, what I was speaking about at the beginning, um, and I'll be posting that interview with that CEO, Matt Lilly, momentarily, um, and saying that the company's expansion to Kenya in the region targets the young population low uptake of insurance. Kenya Commercial Bank, which is up 24.86% in 2014, closed at a record yesterday. Equity Bank, which has rallied a blistering 72.35% year-to-date, closed at a record yesterday. Britain EA has rallied 111.22%, closed at a record yesterday. Centum has rallied 87.87% and has closed at a record yesterday. And uh, that's signaling to us the strength um, uh, within the stock market. Obviously, we'll get pauses for breath, but we're in a bull run. And we've broken out uh, uh, through chart support. NSC 20 crossing 5,200 is an important signal. Uh, once again, thank you for stopping by. If you want to track the stock exchange in real time here in Nairobi, just register on rich.co.ke, get a password, go to Rich Live, put in your password, it's all free and you're in. And uh, you can check anything you like by bid, offer, size, bid, size of the bid, size of the offers, and all that kind of thing. Last trades, it's, it's a live trading uh, machine. Once again, thank you.